I can't be the only one that thinks this Crown Jewel show was kind of lame, right? I mean, I'm very appreciative of the fact that it was a Saturday afternoon pay-per-view. That's nice. Get the rest of the weekend to myself. Not having to be up late. Positives. But burning three plus hours of my Saturday afternoon on this show. Not so much. Looking back at it, it just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of reason to watch this, honestly. Like, from the very beginning, nothing seemed like it was really at risk. Nothing really seemed like it wasn't going to go exactly the way you feared or thought it was going to. Like, did anybody really believe Drew McIntyre was going to beat Seth Rollins here for the World Heavyweight Championship? No. And I wonder if this is partially, it's not even a reflection negatively against Seth Rollins or Drew McIntyre, because the match was fine in and of itself. I wonder if this is a bit of a reflection in a bad way against Triple H and the current WWE creative philosophy of too many of the champions have title reigns that go too long. Like, especially for the biggest titles, right? You know, remove Roman Reigns for a second, because that's an entirely different monster. But... How long has Rhea been champ? How long has Seth Rollins been champ? Like, I know it used to be stupid back in the day. Like, you would have too many world title and big title changes happen too frequently. But you can also drag out too many title reigns. Like, you know, freaking Gunther wasn't even on the show. And how long was he champion, right? So, I say all this to say... If I don't feel there's a chance that you can see a title change, then I'm instantly not as interested in the match. And ironically enough, out of the, what, five title matches on this show? I think we're five. Yeah, five of them. Out of the five title matches on this show, there was only one I cared about because it was, well, there was two, but it was for different reasons. But there's, there's only one that I really, truly passionately cared about. Because I actually felt there was a chance that the title could change hands. We're getting into this kind of predictable pattern of same old shit here. You know, this feels very Vince-like in some ways. Oh, excuse me. I can't say anything against God, ugh. Because he's the internet's booking hero for whatever fucking reason. I don't know why. But Seth Rollins retains, no big surprise. Just like Rhea Ripley retained in this fatal five-way match, and I opined on Twitter during the match, you know, I wouldn't care about any two of these women wrestling against each other. I care about Rhea Ripley because leather was made for her. That war paint she was wearing on her face, not so much. That's a sexy fucking woman. That said, I wouldn't care to see her face off against any of these four other women individually. So why the fuck would it be any better if I was expected to watch all four of them face off against her? I'm not going to care. I didn't care. Saudi crowd seemed like they kind of cared for this one at least. Uh, Solo Sokoa defeating John Cena in the matter that he did to me is one of these things of it is a diminishing return. If you're calling a guy a goat just for him to get his ass kicked all the time, you could say, hey, look. This is the way we artificially prop up our current talent by calling the guy a goat and then having everybody steamroll past him. But if everybody can beat John Cena now, there's no stakes here. It is predictable. And at this point, it just feels like it is a tune-up for what we really need. And we know we want, folks. He's hearing voices in his head. It's time for the Viper to strike in Philadelphia, WrestleMania 40. Randy Orton versus John Cena. This time it counts. Because at this point, would you really care about anything else John Cena did from a work standpoint? Cena and Orton, you don't know what the finish could be. You don't know who would win that. That could be some breakfast club business. That doesn't work for me, brother. That doesn't work for me, brother shit. Like, you would actually kind of give a fuck. But he's facing off against a solo Sokoa or any other number run of these fucking guys. He's losing to them all in one-on-one matches. Again, it was the problem you had with Chris Jericho for a year. If 
He's always losing to everybody at the big shows at some point in time. It doesn't carry the same weight. It just doesn't. My favorite match on this show was easily Logan Paul versus Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. Like, Logan Paul just doesn't have any business being as fucking good as he is. That's, that's whether it's his work, his personality, his ability to actually connect with the crowd, work the crowd. The guy is fucking phenomenal. He might be a douchebag of a person, and he is, but the motherfucker is a real professional wrestler. And this shit worked. And even when you look at you know, that Rey Mysterio flip where Logan Paul, it appeared, was out of position and was going to be a really bad and potentially dangerous botch. The way he adjusted to be able to catch Rey Mysterio like that and save him from potentially serious injury, like, that's impressive shit right there. But Logan Paul wins eventually with the brass knucks on Rey Mysterio, and I love this shit, right? Like, mix it up. Put somebody that actually deserves the United States Championship as the United States title winner and champion. And Logan Paul is that. So I cared a lot about this one. Similar to the Saudi crowd, though, I really did not give a fuck about EO Sky versus Bianca Belair. In large part because I felt like there's no way Bianca's winning this belt back. I can look at her and appreciate her, but that's about it. And perhaps WWE asking the Saudi crowd to care about two women's matches was a bridge too far. One, fine. Two of them? They were not feeling this one. And I know a lot of people are going to be excited about Kyrie Sane coming back. And I look at her and I say, what's the big fucking deal? What is so special, different, or unique about her that would make her stand out to me in any way, shape, or form? She feels like another one of these indie-rific fucks that Hunter has a hard-on for, that the hardcore fan base loves, and then they don't ultimately get truly over in the way that they should. They just don't. Sorry. Like, you can miss me with all this. You know... You have her get help in order to beat Bianca, fine, whatever. But again, didn't mean I cared about this match. I did not. Cody Rhodes versus Damian Priest was just a match. You know, he had already made an appearance earlier in the night in the Seth Rollins, at the end of the Seth Rollins-Drew McIntyre title match. Sami Zayn comes in and interjects so Priest can't cash it and Sami Zayn takes off with the Money in the Bank briefcase. I'm just going to say this. How fucking awesome would it have been if Sami Zayn had come out during the main event and unsuccessfully cashed in? <laughs> now you want to talk about a reason for real fucking heat. You want to talk about a reason for real beef. There you fucking go. You stole my briefcase and you blew my shot, you dick. <laughs> Cody Rhodes, of course he was going to fucking beat Damian Priest. He's not beating the John Cena allegations here. John Cena wasn't turning down the Saudi Arabia payout. Neither was Cody Rhodes. And frankly, money more over morality. You know, American fans that get upset about the Saudi Arabia shows. Like at one point I was kind of there and then I kind of realized, well, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> like the U.S. isn't a perpetuator of, of, of mass human rights violations throughout the centuries. Who <laughs> the fuck is America to judge anybody? And I mean anybody on that fucking shit. Furthermore, money over morality has always been and will always be the American way. Don't ever get it twisted. Don't ever get it twisted. So, of course, Cody went there to get his fucking Saudi Arabia payout, just like John Cena did. Can't blame him. Get that money because clearly morals don't fucking matter in this world. And it's stupid to pretend like they do. Oh, did you? No, they don't. No, they don't. This world sucks. Remember that. Just like Cody Rhodes sitting there and waiting and chomping at the bit to finish the story fucking sucks. What also sucks is how he used his finisher several times. You're facing somebody like Roman Reigns? Yes. It should take several finishers to finish him off because he's different. He's the alpha boss, right? Damian Priest, though? Learn how to work a match better, tell a better story, where when you hit your finish once, it's night. It's over. I mean, just pick on Cody because you saw this shit throughout the night in all these fucking matches, right? How many curb stops does Seth Rollins hit? 
How many spears has Roman Reigns hit? Like, you can go on and on and on. Like, protect these finishers. The finisher should actually finish the match. I know, what a fucking novel concept here. Now, let's get to the main event. I tweeted before the match that it really felt like to me, that, you know, no way they're going to have LA Knight win this. You feel that reasonably. But it feels like you don't want to just have him lose. You might even want to have him win via count out or DQ or something to mix up the formula a little bit. And even in this case, I can't fucking defend this. I thought it was a really good performance from LA Knight. I thought it was kind of the same old run of the mill performance from Roman Reigns. This has got to be booked better than this. Like shake shit up, do something different. This was pathetically predictable, unfortunately. I don't give a fuck it comes from interference or not. You don't have LA Knight job out here. It just doesn't hit the same as opposed to if he wins via countout or DQ. Then you feel like he really deserves another opportunity here. It's like he just blends into the crowd of how many other fucking guys that have experienced the same thing. Cody Rhodes experiences, Kevin Owens experiences, Sami Zayn experiences this shit. Like, what the fuck's the difference here? Why are we trying to make everybody the fucking same? Unbelievable to me. So yeah, no, this shit was lame today. It really was. I thought Logan Paul and Rey Mysterio, that match fucked for sure. But the rest of this shit, like it felt like you knew everything that was going to happen. And there could be those that will counter and say, hey, you know, sometimes predictable isn't always bad because that means it was the right decision. That's true. I'll grant you that. However, when you are predictable too often, again, it's another matter of diminishing return. There was no way Seth Rollins was losing that strap. There was no way Damian Priest was going to cash in successfully. Even when you stall him, you're like, nah, something's going to fucking happen here, right? There was no way Rhea Ripley was losing. There was no way John Cena was winning clean over Solo. There was no way Bianca was walking out with the belt. There was no way Cody Rhodes was losing. And there was really no way that Roman Reigns was losing here. How many times should you expect to tune into a fucking show and feel like you already know what the goddamn outcome is and in a number of cases, you're even able to do the paint by numbers to know how to fucking get there? I thought Triple H was supposed to be so much better than Vince. Reality check. He ain't, and in some cases, and in some cases, he's fucking worse. 